This is Twit. Okay, well, let's move to another story that has both good things and bad things. We all like more accurate GPS, right? I mean, I love it when my, my GPS doesn't have me jump from one side of the city to the next. Oh, it's or... Or like you're 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 following your mapping software, and it tells you to get onto the freeway at the next opportunity. It's like, wait, I'm on the freeway, yeah. but then you realize, oh, there's a road over to the side. I think I've and that, yeah veered off. No, and that's where it thinks you are. Anyway, so yes, but all this by way of noting that Broadcom has really and this is this is just fun to know I, I just I just picked this up as I was putting things together and I thought oh this would be just neat to share real quickly uh they've re they've produced the first low power commercially feasible next generation GPS chip it's the BCM 47755 they started sampling it it will be appearing in next year's smartphones. They're not saying which ones or whose, but in 2018, this next generation chip will start happening. The current generation of smartphone, G, you know, cell phone GPS chips use the original GPS ranging and positioning technology designated as L1. And and L1 technology uses a chirp, which is lower complexity and longer, um, and a lower frequency. All of those things, they work, but they have, they have a problem with resolution, that is your actual location resolution, and they have a problem when you're in an environment with lots of reflections, like you're in downtown of a city and the signals might be bouncing off of buildings. And, and that's a problem called, known as multipath. That is, there are multiple paths by which a satellite signal can reach you due to reflection off of other objects, which tend to confuse things. So there, the next generation is known as L5, which uses a much higher frequency, a much more complex burst pattern, which is, as a consequence, much shorter. The shorter burst means that it's over by the time a second or a, a secondary or tertiary or whatever reflection might reach you. So the phone is smart enough or the this, this chip subsystem, the GPS subsystem, to only pay attention to the, to the first one. So the higher frequency has a has a has a reduced problem with multipath interference in general. The shorter burst further improves that, and the higher complexity, higher frequency signal, which can be carried in a higher frequency carrier, means you get much better location accuracy. So much so that where whereas what we've been using has five meter accuracy. Next year, these chips will give us 30 centimeter <laughs> accuracy. So, oh. wow. Very cool. That is such a jump. I mean, military GPS has had increased accuracy since the start of the system. Right. But 30 centimeter resolution for a consumer product? I didn't even think yeah. that would be allowed. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be very cool. Oh, and I forgot to say, half the power. Oh, well, yeah, well, yes. Half the power. I think it's a 25 nanometer process or something. And so it, they're, they're reducing the size. They've cut the power in half. So anybody know, who's ever used uh, Google Maps on a phone and watched yes. your battery just drain or, or something like Pokemon Go or any uh, AR game that has to tag your location in the real world, you understand that the GPS chipset actually pulls a lot of power, way more than you think it would because it doesn't well, actually transmit anything. But it's doing so much work. Yeah. It, 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 in fact, this has a dual core arm <laughs> as part of it in order to, to do all the background math required in order to, to make this happen. So That's where the power savings come from because you're not tagging the main processor anymore with doing all the, the triangulation. Right. Okay, right. that makes sense. All right, right. well, hey, Steve... I, I don't want to jinx it, but I think we just had a positive story. 
oh, good. Yes, 